Okay. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good and you. Very good. Thank you. So this is our second uh, Scrappy Sunday chat. Um, it is actually Saturday today, the 26th of March, um, so that it can go up for tomorrow. Um, my name is Mariette, also known as Die Boerfrau, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Die Boerfrau. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm Leoni. Um, I'm just Leoni. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook as Independence Crochet. And then I've got a podcast called Pick Up Stitches. So, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Yes, welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we are both working on socks here and I just misplaced the one DPN. That's why I hate DPNs because you always look for one of them. <laughs> Magic looks better. You, it's always attached somewhere. <laughs> unless, unless the tip comes off from the cable, but yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, that's one of yeah. the other problems, but have you sorted yours out now better or not yet? No, it's, it's perfect now. I haven't had any issues again. Oh, great. So the grip really okay. works to just tighten it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. So how's life? How's life? <laughs> Busy. <laughs> Life is life. We're oh. still here. We're kicking and we're going forward. So that's all that matters. <laughs> How's uh, life been on your side with all the studies and all of those tests? Oh, no, it's 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 it's, it's tough, eh? But um, I decided I'm taking last night off. So when class is finished yesterday afternoon, I switched off. I've taken my laptop but put on Nitty Natty and Crazy Sock Lady and all the podcasts which I was not able to look at this week and then um, took my sock and I said I'm doing nothing else now. Also this morning I decided I'll start studying again after lunch time so yeah. No you have to take a break you have to take a break. Yeah so it's one more week Two semester tests, two assignments, and then it's back to sort of normal. But yeah, one more week. One okay. More week. Yeah. Well, good, good luck on that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thanks for letting us do it on a Saturday instead of a Sunday to accommodate me. No, of so, course. Yeah. I mean, it, it, takes, it takes some time to get everything ready and get it up on YouTube. So, what can you do? You make a plan to get it there on the right time. Yeah. Exactly. I'm so jealous of you being able to look up while you net. I have to look down. <laughs> yeah, this, I think this has been years of practice. I do still drop a few stitches. Uh -huh. I can't really do um, patterning like pearl stitches or so with, with knitting. But yeah, I cannot crochet and look up. That's impossible for me. Well, I can do that. <laughs> if it's something easy and mindless that I can do, but I cannot knit and not look at what I'm doing. I'm not there yet. And I always said that I'm not really a knitter. I've always said that I'm a crocheter, but I can knit and look up. I don't know how I, when I started practicing this, but it's been years. <laughs> well, I think it's muscle memory. I'll, I'll also get there someday. Yes, I'm sure you will. It's just yeah. getting used to feeling the stitches rather than seeing the stitches. <laughs> <laughs> and you just know where they are. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing your hands talk to each other without your eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to get into the scrappy things. Um, yeah, I want me to start. You've got more than me. Okay. Yeah, you need to start because you've got lots more to show than I do. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me do that. So in the previous um, 
Scrappy Sunday chat, we were talking about the leftover yarns that I had from this lamp and the blanket that I made, and you said I must bring the blanket. So I actually ripped it off the bed this morning <laughs> and I brought it, but it's down here, so I'm just going to duck down. Because okay. it's big. <laughs> it's very okay, big. And I also just need to duck away for two seconds. I'm, I will be right back. Sure. Maybe I must... Maybe I must think about... Let me see. No, fine. Let me just do that. I think you'll remember this blanket. I, when I put the border around it, I used a acrylic cone of maroon yarn and I was sitting outside here when we were chatting and, and crocheting this big thing. But anyway, I just fold it into pieces. I'm just going to show you a bit because it's really huge. No, no, I remember that very clearly. And it's got all of these stitch patterns. And yes, one with some bobbles, but they're yeah. just these bobbles. What is this? It's knitted bobbles. It's like knitted squares or circles just work together to make a little bobble. But it, I didn't put all the bobbles on it because I was afraid they'll come loose. But yes, and then I just made some um, double crochet a border around it because I don't like the stockinette fabric of some of the um, blocks that roll up. So I did that to get it to lay flat. But yes, that's a bit of the blanket that I have. And then I used all of these, this mess of mine. It's still a mess. It's a crow's nest. Oh, <laughs> anyway, so I made the, the wrist warmer. I did not weave in the last ends. I'll just put it on so that you can see. Let me do oh, that. Oh, nice. Yes. So I've oh, got nice. only two ends to weave in, which is the one at the top and the one at the bottom. And the other ones, I've all knitted them in as I, go, as I went. So before I got to the end of the round, I would for about six or eight stitches um, knit over the end of the new yarn and then drop the old yarn and then knit six or eight stitches with the new working yarn and um, working over the end that I just stopped. And um, it did go very well trying to eliminate the jog and then somewhere along the line I forgot to slip the first stitch but it's just a wrist warmer so I'm not too worried about it. So there is a little bit of jog somewhere but um, I'm not going to rummage around trying to find it. But yeah, it's nice and colorful. And I have done a Russian bind off at the end. Um, so it's not a stretchy bind off. So it's not stretchy. So it keeps on my arm nicely and it doesn't just fall off. I don't know if you're okay, going to, to see the bind off really. No, that's I can see. The front of it and. That's the back of the bind off. Okay. It's neat. Yes, it's it's neat. I think I first saw the Russian bind off, or somebody mentioned the Russian bind off. I think it was Adela from Adela from Yarn Creations uh, podcast. I'll link her down below. She made a a, a cardigan. I I cannot remember if it was the it was one of Andrea Maori's patterns, I think, or um. I'll have to check and then I'll, I'll link it down below where she mentioned the Russian bind off. So when I was doing this, I was trying the stretchy bind off and it didn't look right. And I thought, let me try something else. And I tried that and yeah, it works very well for a wrist warmer for me. So I've also done this with a five millimeter um, knitting needles. And I haven't started the second one because my beekeeper cardigan has taken my five millimeter needles hostage. It happens. Yes, so, so that's my project. Um, okay, but the rest warmer, that still scraps that's left from the big blanket. Do I remember that correctly now? Yes, yes that's all the scraps that I've got left from the blanket. And then I made this lampshade on my own and everything else that's left is now going into other projects like um, this wrist warmer. Okay. 
Let's go. Right, your turn. Yeah. Oh, it's my turn now. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I was sitting under this guy this whole morning. I also shared it last time. We were at this red block, and then I've put it's spin cushions. Um, progress keeper on there. So it's been four weeks and there's four blocks. So yay to me. <laughs> Fantastic. Beautiful. I really love yes. that, that blanket. It's really beautiful. Yeah. So I've taken it out. It's sitting somewhere here where I can see summer, the Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's out in front where I can see it every day so come sunday morning i've got no excuse it's the first thing i do it's 15 minutes and at least this guy has got its extra block so just for interest sake this one that tree of life blanket that i'm doing for a mosaic make along yes this is the terracotta color so i'm just done with the color wave for terracotta and for the, for the background of the tree if you, okay, if you follow yes. what i'm saying Yes. So, so there was just enough left for one block. I've weighed when I did the previous blocks, I need eight grams. Okay. It's eight grams at least per block that I need. So this was like 10 grams and I made it just. Okay. And just, uh, just tell us how many um, little bricks is in your block? How many? Okay. So on this block it's a 10 by 10. Okay. What you, yes what you're saying okay it's a bit bright but yeah then it's no it's fine yes okay so it doesn't even look like i've touched the stash of leftover yarns but doesn't matter yeah the stash of leftover <laughs> yarns uh, seem to grow easier than it's <laughs> then you can work them into something. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It's it's actually, I mean, like this is not a scrap. This is not really a scrappy amount. This is still a lot. Yes. So they could go into some other projects, maybe still. I I could be considering something as scrap too quickly. <laughs> yes, the clarification of a scrap sometimes i think a little difficult yeah it's vague <laughs> so yeah okay all right so that is your corner to corner scrappy blanket what did you say you're calling yes, it I, your golden memories I'm calling it the golden memories because it's all made of the alipier gold um double net yarn uh, yes. i've got yeah, you guys can actually see a little bit of my stash on that. I just love the colors of this yarn. I don't know if I'll ever totally move away from it, to be honest. I, I actually enjoy this yarn, especially when I do crochet work. So, yeah. Yes. And it's all double, your double knits here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, the yellow is my four millimeter crochet hook. The four millimeter crochet hook, yes. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, I have put in some work in my um ripple crochet blanket. So, in our previous um scrappy Sunday chat, I was here and I've added all of these colors. I don't know, oh, that's that's a little bit better, I think. Um, that's a lot. Yes, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. I uh, got a bit carried away, it seems. Don't <laughs> you have fun? So, as we decided in the previous one, that I'm going to add more of these colors. So, I just grabbed some of the colors and just added them in, in different, um, um, what do you call it? Not in the same. Sequence. That's it. Sequence. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so yes, that is that is this blanket. And then I need, um, I think it's 14 or 15 grams to do a two row um, color repeat. 
So what I consider a real scrap <laughs> is this that is left from the yellow. <laughs> so I mean, it's, sure. I don't know if this is gonna be six meters or 10 meters, but anyway. So I have another scrappy project that I use these ends of a ball for. And it is this okay. very, very, very long-term blanket of mine looks a bit bad. I didn't do crochet over the ends um, when I started this, this one. So this is the, let me just get the thing. It is almost the same as the corner to corner, like little bricks, um, but this is called the tulip stitch or brick stitch or crazy stitch. So instead of working from corner to corner, as you can see where the colors is going, I'm working in stripes. Oh, okay. So it's, a, it's basically the same principle. It's just you're not working from a corner up in making a block or a rectangle. You just work in, in rows. And I think this might be the same type of thing. Um, I think... Is it Laura that's making a, like a corner to corner block that looks like corner to corner stitch, but it's going in the round like a granny square. But it's this type of stitch. I'm, I'm thinking it looks a lot the same to me. I'll have to ask her if it's this type of thing. Okay. But I'll also link that down below. So <laughs> got a lot okay. lots of linking to do, then you can, can have a look. So this little oh, piece of- On that, are you making notes? I'll, I'm making oh. notes. Don't stress. <laughs> so this will be added into into this. Even though I already have a little piece of this yellow in the blanket, doesn't really bother me because I mean this is the end of this ball and I'm not doing anything with it now. So I'm just throwing it into the blanket. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's nice. But I think that will one will take quite a while to finish because. I mean, I need to get to like ends of ends of the ball. <laughs> oh, no, you're really wasting nothing with that one. No, I'm definitely trying to not have little bits and two meter pieces lying around. <laughs> no. Um, where did I put it now? So, I mentioned last time that I want to do something with the socks, the yarn that's going to be left from all the socks that I'm planning on making because I'm hooked. Where is it? Oh my goodness. Marie? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. So I did eventually go for the coziest memory blanket. And okay. Yeah, I didn't do a block last Sunday because I had to study. <laughs> but here we go. I am planning on doing another block today because, because, now I've got too many things going on here. I am on my toe. Look at this. Oh, that's so, beautiful. Yes. <sighs> which, which brings me to the Back to the topic of what is a scrapping, eh? It brings me, we are circling back to that now. Yes. Because I've got 25 grams left of this yarn. So this okay. is the, the clear base from Esteriza yarns. And yes. this is a lot. This is more than a mini skein, a 20 gram mini skein still, and I only need four grams per block. I've okay. also weighed them. So I'm still pondering because I've got an idea for a project that I want to do with 20 gram mini skeins, which is busy accumulating behind me. Yes. So I don't want to say now I'm going to add all of Sorry. this in here. My dogs are going crazy. Just give me a second. Sorry. 
sorry about that. Hopefully that will help a little bit. All right, so you said you've now got 25 grams of that yarn left and you want to do something with 20 gram minis that is piling up. So I should, I should still have enough left to put in a block here, but I don't know if I want to put it in right away in case I just need that extra four grams. So I'm, I'm sitting here between two fires. Yes, no, so, I, I agree. I would rather first do the project, the second one, and then add the rest if there's enough. Yes, and then there's still loopy number six left, a lot. There's still this one left. Ooh, that almost looks white. The one yes. from the very first, this um, acrylic yarn from my very first pair of socks for January. Yes. And then there's obviously this, but it's a lot of gray. It's going to be another grayish right next to one another. So I don't know. Does it matter? I don't know. No, you must you must do what makes you happy. Um, but yeah. with sock yarns, I would say if you have a lot of um, yarns left, like more than 10 grams, I don't know. I would rather first do a scrappy pair of socks and add two, even if it's just two rows of that color before I go and add the last bit. You can maybe calculate yes. and see, say for instance, your socks, if you use two grams, I'm just taking a, an example. Say for instance, you use two grams to put two rows in two socks. And then you know, okay, I can add four rows of this yarn and I'll still have enough to put it in the cozy memory blank then you can use it for both, maybe. Because scrappy socks yeah. is a lot of fun. If you knit over the ends and you don't have to weave them in, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, so that's another, another something that I'm thinking of doing. But yeah, I got plans that I don't, I'm not ready to share yet. I need to think about a few things still. No, of so course. I'm just saying, 20 grams, I've got plans for that. Yes. No, if, do that first. Definitely. Yes. So I should not even put it in my scrappy, my scrappy box. I must put it with the rest. Not scrap. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. But what, what else do you got? I know you got lots of projects. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't have another scrappy project at the moment. Um, uh -huh. I'm just working on all of these lots of projects that I have at the moment um, with the two garments and the and the blanket and the socks. <laughs> I've got too oh, many yeah. too many plans and then I'm still on the side busy with the design so. I'm working on a Tunisian honeycomb placemat design. I've been working on it for a, for a long time, but um, I'm now busy testing the pattern and trying to simplify the instructions a bit because it's a bit over the head. You know, it's, it's a bit, you know, I, I'm trying to simplify it a little bit so that it's easier to understand. You need to make it your proof. <laughs> No, you know, if the first row of instructions is like six sentences long, then you know, okay, like, listen, you need to do something else. So I'm working on that. Working on okay. that. So, yeah, lots of projects. I think at the end of the day, um, the Tunisian placemat can maybe also be done in a scrappy sense. Um, if you have scraps of cotton to a certain amount, because it's going to be in blocks then you can do it with scraps as well. Um, I'm just using two colors at the moment, but you can use more colors if you like and just make every block another color. So it can be a nice scrappy project if you have lots of cotton scraps, but that's all I'm saying about that. You'll have to wait and see it in future. I will ask nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. So, and this is now, I'm, I'm looking for suggestions. 
because I want to start another scrappy project in Tunisian crochet. Okay. Because I've got all these charity acrylic yarns that is still from my very first attempts of trying to get back better at crocheting and so on. So I've got a lot of that still left little bits of pieces and full skeins and it's actually it's a lot so and I was thinking of doing something with that another scrappy type blanket thing for Tunisian crochet and I've already got two ideas but I'm open to a lot more suggestions number one is the blanket that you also did of Beatrix Naiman the one that she's also got a tutorial on YouTube for Yes, and the, then the other the patchwork uh, blanket, yes, yes, yes. And then the other one that I saw only yesterday is the 10 stitch blanket. So okay. you start in the middle with 10 stitches and okay. then you make a square, all like it's almost like it's got the same effect as the log cabin, okay. It's, it's like a square spiral. All right, yes. we'll have to link it down below so that the viewers can also see it. It so, sounds very interesting. So, I don't know, do you have any ideas of Tunisian scrappy projects? I actually do. <laughs> um, Talk to me. Maybe um, you can do maybe two other suggestions is um, like a, also a square, like the join as you go square blanket. I have started one long ago and it's lying somewhere. Um, it's also honeycomb. I don't know. I love the honeycomb stitch in Tunisian, but it's like honeycomb little blocks that you start with one block mm -hmm. and then you add just like the corner to corner, join as you go type of blanket, but in honeycomb blocks and then every row you join to the next block. Um, I'll link a picture of my Instagram feed of that down below. Um, and then the other thing that you can maybe um, try if you have quite a bit of um, scraps is something like an interlac blanket where you've got an interlac stripe in one color maybe um, but now that would require a little bit more of a um, grams of a color maybe I don't know maybe you can break it off in the middle of the row I've, I've just never done that I've just made a little um, cushion cover in interlac Tunisian crochet, which was quite a lot of fun because it's short stitches. Mine was small blocks. It was about, I think, three or four centimeters. So I just did it with a normal crochet hook. I didn't even need a Tunisian okay. hook. So if, if you want to practice more Tunisian crochet, I would say that's maybe not a good suggestion, except if you want uh, big blocks. But I would say a scrappy, like little blocks of different colors. You know, that's nice and colorful. That might work mm. better. But anyway. Okay. Now, I've, I've actually seen this interlux as well. Am I pronouncing that right? I hope so. <laughs> interlux, yeah. As far as I know. Anyway. Yeah. So that's, that's another option. But yeah. maybe... maybe I must do the size of each and see which one I prefer. Yes, maybe that's a good idea. A little swatch and then decide what you like, what technique you like. But maybe some yeah, viewers can have some other suggestions and they'll pop it down below in the comment box and we can have a look. I was hoping for that. I was hoping for that, yes. Oh, but... so, yes. so that's on the scrappy project. When, are, when is that socks finished now? When is this finished? I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you um, that it seems that um, Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady is right. She says that mm -hmm. when you do a, a different method for your sock knitting, like with the DPNs, I don't know if it's two socks or four pairs of socks or what, but she says you must practice a bit before you decide. And I must say, the DPNs is growing on me a bit. Um, 
I mean, I still lose one or two, but the method is not so strange anymore. And my laddering seems to improve quite a bit. So, I don't know. I did order um, a 2.25 um, nine inch circular needle, but it will only come maybe at the end of April or so. So I'm not in a hurry, but um, I do have more of this um, blend of yarn and I don't know if I want to do all of them with deep ends. I want to try the nine inch. So we'll see. But okay. at least now I've got the socks right, the, 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 the circumference and the gauge and everything, because the previous one of these socks, I think I knitted it at least twice. <laughs> because I did a lot and ripped back and did a lot and ripped back. But yes. We got the formula, so. Yeah, no, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I'm not so, afraid of frogging, so. Yeah, no. I'm on my kitchener. Fantastic. Very, That's very the nice. only finished object for March, eh? Yeah, but you had lots of other things on your plate. It's still an accomplishment with everything else that you have going on that you still got the socks done. Yeah, like it's the only goal that I did achieve <laughs> for March. <laughs> anyway. One goal is better than none. No, I'm lying, man. I got one, my goal of one block a Sunday on this blanket you at see. least done as well. You just multiply your goals. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> okay. So right. Sorry, just say again. What's coming up? What's coming up? Mm -hmm. I don't know really. Um, it's just the, uh, oh no, I am now lying. <laughs> there is something coming up. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. Um, Yes, the two of us that is going to Centurion on the 2nd of April, forgot about that. So we're going to meet Marina and Adela, and I don't know who else, and um, Anneli Fushia. I've met her on Zoom, but I've never met her in real life before. And then, of course, I've seen with the things that Marina sent me that um, Itzi Klein is going to be there as well. So we're going to meet Gertreida. <laughs> So I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Oh, nice. Well, I also didn't know how Trader is going to go, so exciting times. Yes, the little advert that she sent me with the banking details and all of those things um, has got said on the Itzy claim. So I guess she's going to be there. Oh, but I'll, fun, I'll also fun. link that down below. If anybody else is interested in going, it's a... Um, it's a talk where Adela is going to talk about um, raglan, top-down raglan construction. Um, she's going to give tips on that. So if there is still space and somebody wants to go, they can contact um, contact Anneli or Marina. Their uh, details is is on the post. I'll I'll link it down below. Yeah, just in time for me. I don't know. I always say the universe provides. Just in time. Yes. Because I've got the million questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did no. do a raglan construction before um, on a cardigan, but the cardigan's neck is too open. It's like it just wants to fall off. So um, that's actually why I chose the beekeeper cardigan as the next one, because um, some of the people said that the construction... I think she calls it a, like a saddle construction or something. So it hugs onto your shoulders better than just a normal raglan construction. So, yes, I don't know. We must write down all our questions and ask Adela because she's got quite the knowledge on, on sweaters. She makes lots of beautiful, beautiful tees and, and sweaters. Yeah. So I'm also super excited. I'm going to learn a lot. And then the beekeeper, how's that fitting? Have you tried fitting it or is it not big enough yet? Um, I did fit it. I actually fit it quite a lot of times because I'm on the sleeve. I think my sleeve is, is almost 
this long now. So it seems it seems like it's fitting fitting nicely as it should. Um, the sleeve did help to pull the construction over my shoulder better, so I can see that it fits. So I'm just doing the sleeve. I'm going to continue until it's about like about this length, and then I'm going to put it on hold and do the other one for the same amount and then I'm going to put both of them on hold and do the body because I'm a little bit afraid of yarn chicken and I don't mind three quarter length sleeves because I do wear a lot of wrist warmers and I like in winter to not have my jersey so long because I'm always in the dish water and I'd rather wear an arm warm a wrist warmer and take it off to do something and put it back than pushing up my cardigans and wearing out the ribbing. Yes. So we shall see how that comes out. Okay. But I'm very excited about yeah. it. That's good. good. But that jersey of yours got a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, no, it's like we this just one saw is... a little piece on a podcast, and I mean it's almost one third of a jersey. You know, at, you know, after lunchtime there. Eh? In, in the classes, you know, things go like this. And instead of falling asleep, because no, everything is done online. So normally you would sit in a class and there's other people around and, you know, there's, there's some energy. Now yes. you're just sitting in front of the computer. So after lunchtime, I am really struggling. So I find it actually helps. Like, I don't need to think about anything until I get to a marker, a thingy. So I can focus and my hand stays busy. And it, it actually helps me a little bit to, for my mind not to wander too much yes. and start looking at my phone the whole time and things like that. So at least I'm, my hands are busy instead of reaching for the phone and getting totally distracted of what's happening on the computer <laughs> yes so that's uh, that's the only reason it's after lunch time <laughs> but it's good it, it gets your project going and it keeps you focused and yeah people always seems to think that when you're sitting and knitting in a in an environment where there's people sitting and and having a chat that you are bored or um I don't know what the English word is. I can't think of it quickly. Um, <laughs> rude. I think you're rude. Um, but mm -hmm. actually, it makes me as well focus better because sometimes, like, sometimes people are talking about things that you don't really have an interest in. Like, say, for instance, the husband will talk about a bailing machine. And then... You know, I can sit there and I will be knitting on my sock or whatever and I keep occupied and I sit and I'm not fidgeting and thinking about other things. So I can join in in the conversation if I want and if I understand something and I'm not sitting on a phone and really being rude. So yeah. knitting is really oh, yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Or if you're like me, I start yawning, I get tired, I cannot participate in the conversation. Then I get tired and I start yawning and then I'm really, <laughs> really ill. Yeah, no, goodness. Oh. What we would but do. Anyway. So is, is that anything else? That, that we have? Yeah, I showed everything. I only have the two projects. Hopefully by next month I'll have some Tunisian thing going. Can't promise, but maybe. No, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens in the next month. Yeah. Okay, so that is it from us. I think um, we're gonna go and uh, thank you so much for watching and remember to hit the like and subscribe if you haven't uh, subscribed. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful week. And then I'll see you when I see you. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.